Couples Camp and Use Surveyor Ultralight just came in here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Overall, appears to be pretty decent shape, fairly well kept. I don't see anything on it that terribly concerns me. Um, I am the type of person, though, if I see something, I say something. So let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. If you look up here at the nose, primarily uh, at the top area, but in a couple little spots, you can see a couple little wrinkles. Well, this is what's called solar delamination. Basically, the sun uh, kind of beat on the front wall of this a little bit harder than the rest of it where it was parked, and it causes the air and gases inside that laminated front wall to expand. And uh, it, it just basically kind of bubbles like toad skins, effectively. It's called toad skinning. Uh, the, the nose of this thing. Um, it's not major. It's not massive. It's there. It's not structural. It's cosmetic. Well, you folks deserve to know about it. And if that scares you, if that doesn't give you confidence, um, I understand. Uh, I know there's nothing wrong with it, but maybe you don't, and you need to buy what makes you comfortable. And that's why if I see something, I say it right away, and we get it out of the way here at Halet RV. So if that's a disqualifier for you, not a problem. Go ahead and find another one of our units or videos to review and enjoy. I know that we'll shoot you straight. And if something like that's okay, as long as the money's right for you, well then let's dive in a little deeper. One of the good parts about these uh, kind of uncommon kitchen slides that you see here in some of the manufacturers that used to build really classic ultralights like this Surveyor here, you also see this very often, even still today in the Rockwood RVs that we carry here at Halitz, is that with a shallow kitchen slide, you gain a lot of good kitchen space, but you never cut the camper off when the slide is closed. So you always maintain easy travel access to pretty much anything and everything. The slide just makes it nicer. With the slide opened up, the first thing I really want to focus on here is actually the kitchen, because the kitchen is the slide, which is uncommon in today's market, but in historical terms, it was pretty normal. You saw a lot of galley slides, as they're called, using a marine term. And you can see how you've got all of your kitchen storage and counter space and everything in the slide out here. Now, a common question is, well, doesn't that cause a problem with plumbing? And the answer is no. No, it doesn't. They use flexible plumbing lines, not fixed lines like you're used to in a house. So it kind of throws you off a little bit because uh, you can see that that's not exactly a 100% width drawer for the face of the, the drawer plate, but when it's closed up, it gives it a nice appearance that we'll see in a minute. Now, the kitchen slide means there's some extra counter space behind the sink and the stove for things like coffee makers and whatnot, and the sink and stove cover regain prep space you would otherwise lose. Another thing that I think is kind of neat down here is the little shoe garage uh, below the refrigerator and drawers, it, you know, that little overhang from the fridge gives you a perfect place to walk in and kick off your shoes and since this slide out is above the floor the whole camper is carpetless so it's just easy to clean now in addition to being carpetless you're going to kind of notice that uh, they took advantage of the easy cleaning aspects of this camper I don't see things like cabinet scuffs and blemishes or anything scary anywhere it looks like it was clean well kept used not abused. Things appear to be clean, shiny, gleaming, like the tabletop, the countertops, they all got a nice gleam about them still. Uh, we do have central air in here, which is nice for that spring, summer, fall camping. This does have cabinet ducted heating, so in addition to an easy cleaning carpetless floor, it also has no heat vents in the floor. Now once again, very much uh, like Rockwood RVs with that kitchen slide, one of the cool things that opens up for is to put the dining table or the seating on the door side of the RV. What that allows for is this nice big window on the campsite so that you can look at your campsite under that power awning instead of someone else. Now this is an absurdly large U-Dinette. This is <laughs> beyond full size, Goliath size. So if you want to fold that down into a sleeper, you could probably sleep a couple adults there, a couple grandkids for sure. And one of the things I really like about it is how they left this end open right here. So you can kind of sit down and put your shoes on before you hop outside, which I think is just really smart. Walk in, take your shoes off right there, set them under that little refrigerator shelf we looked at and good to go. Table's free floating, elliptical base, so if you want to take that outside for picnic time or something, you can. It's also nice to kind of shift it around if you're, you know, scooting around the booth. That way it's uh, very easy for people, tall and small, as Dr. Seuss would say, to come in and out. Now, uh, rear bathrooms have always been a very common couple's layout, but since the advent of outside kitchens, couples camping rear bathrooms have seen a huge resurgence in popularity. And one of the reasons is to they 
you know, since the outside kitchen takes up a lot of wall space outside, it's been very easy for manufacturers to simply match that same depth in the bathroom. And what the end result is, is a huge rear bathroom where you don't have to, like, you know, uh, stand sideways to, uh, you know, shut the bathroom door to get in the shower or anything like that. It's, uh, it's very spacious. It's comfortable. Um, you also run into a lot of showers now instead of tubs, which you'll see here. But I wanted to focus on the huge countertop space that we have in this bathroom. This is very big. This rivals a lot of fifth wheels that we see here at Halet RV. Now, over here, again, we have a corner shower, not a travel trailer tub. And uh, that extra skylight, and I don't know if you're hearing it, but the power vent fan's actually going on above my head right now. I just kind of want a nice little breeze rolling through the camper, and it's doing its job pretty nicely. The other thing that this one does very well, though, is storage in the bathroom. Now, the mirrors here are nice whether you're, like, getting ready or you just want the bathroom to feel bigger, but it's everything behind them that matters. And when it all opens up back here... You see that this bathroom just has a tremendous amount of storage space. The, I guess you could say really, the, the bulk of the dry storage of the RV is actually located back here in the bathroom. You've got this big cavity up here, and I love the double shelf setup that they put above the outside kitchen. But even here around the sink area where you have uh, the countertop, you've got full storage down here too. This is a very nicely done bathroom. For entertainment, most of the time I expect the type of folks that are probably going to purchase a camper like this, you're probably going to spend most of your time outside doing stuff, even if it's just sitting in a patio chair. But if you choose to add a TV, the uh, entertainment center here actually does spin around, which is kind of nice. And one of the intelligent things they did, you see used quite a bit on like Jayco stuff today actually, is the uh, um, TV bracket right here, inside and outside matches. Now. What's funny is this is made by L&W, but when you flip it upside down, it looks like the M7 TV bracket. L&W actually stands for Lloyd and Wilbur Bontrager, the brothers behind, uh, you know, the success at Jayco. Um, so they actually have their own engineering company, L&W Engineering, who makes things like TV brackets. So other brands like Surveyor actually buy parts from Jayco for their RVs. A little tidbit a lot of folks aren't aware of. So there's no TV in it. Easy to add, though. And not everyone's looking for one. But this is DVD, stereo, not Bluetooth. I do want to point that out. Inside, outside speakers. And a quick little look at the front bedroom up here. It's simple. It's not flashy. It's effective. I like that vent above the bed, though. But this is absolutely just like, okay, we've had a lot of fun all day. All we're going to do here is just bed down at night, and we're going to be good to go. We do have a full-length hanging closet on both sides that is nice and deep, and you can see that we do have side stands, a nice little shelf beside each uh, side of the bed for phone chargers, CPAP users, whatever. So, other than the, uh, the little spot of solar delamination on the nose, I can't find anything on the exterior here that is uh, really concerning me. Everything appears to be good. Um, I do like this big front pass-through compartment. Another thing that kind of gives me confidence to this one is when I look down here, I can see that it's nice and clean. I don't see a lot of scars. Where, uh, and it's also fully finished. It just has a good look to it. Um, you're not seeing a lot of raw construction. That's actually a very similar quality to what I see out of the Coachman Apex Ultralights we have here at Halet RV. Um, they've just got a nice, clean, fully finished look in that pass-through. Now... The awning on this is not, you know, 45 feet long, but it's also not a long RV. They did put the longest awning on it that they possibly could. These are all aluminum structured, and they are actually six-sided laminated. This has laminated front, rear, walls, slide-outs, uh, floors, roof, and sidewalls. And the uh, sidewalls here actually still have a really nice amount of gleam to them. So, the solar delamination that caused that little bit of bubbling up front, you would likely think if it had absorbed that much heat, then you would see things like decal failure and degradation. And if you get up here, you see that's actually not the case. So what that indicates to me is, although this thing was stored in the sun, it was also impeccably well kept and maintained. Uh, you know, it wasn't just left to rot in the sun. And if you take a look down the sidewall, you see the shine and gleam on that. It's very obvious that this was kept clean, UV protected. Real quick peek underneath, you're not going to see much because it does have an enclosed heated underbelly. So if it is going to just have a quick um, dip below freezing overnight, this will be okay. Not four seasons, but a good quick freeze uh, protection here. Um, outside shower, and I like how it's actually located on the kitchen slide, so you don't have to like reach under the slide to get to it. Now, I'm going to guess at some point 
they may have had a flat tire because there are Goodyear tires on the other side and these are Tomax tires, but these look good. The Goodyears look good. Um, Tomax tires are probably the original tires. I, I don't really know the history of that there. I'm kind of piecing this together like uh, CSI for camping as I go basically. I'll have to go talk to Agent Gibbs to sort of figure this out. Well, what is nice for traveling, you don't really see it, uh, but it's got, it's got a uh, Equiflex suspension system right there. So a rubber shock dampening suspension. A little black tank flush makes life uh, simple and easy too. Now back here, something that is very popular, and we see this on set, multiple different RVs, uh, but really made very popular by the Cherokee travel trailers that we carry here at Halitz, is that little cargo slash bike rack on the back. Now I don't see the load sticker on this one, so I know that I'm pretty safe to estimate that at about 200 pound rating. And interestingly, I've never seen a toy lock mounted on the bumper like that, so that uh, if you do bring your bicycles, you can kind of strap them to the camper so they don't go missing at night. Now, a couple interesting things over here. There's actually dual propane hookups beneath the outside kitchenette, so that you can have, uh, like, you one is going to be dedicated to the little two-burner stove right here, but you can um, expand your cooking potential, basically, and add an outside grill as well so this kind of gives you sort of a best of both worlds sort of thing where you can build your own adventure now you normally see these cooktops slide out of like a drawer style thing here but instead of doing that what it does give you is actually decent drawer space here and a real sink with a real drain that'll go down into the gray holding tank same as the bathroom um over here i do like the larger outside refrigerator so in total you've got probably nine to ten total cubic foot of cold storage space in this one pretty respectable um so that's one good year tire that must have because that's a tomac so evidently at some point in this camper's career that tire must have gotten a flat somehow or some way and the folks went through and replaced it with a very nice tire so they you know they weren't chintzy and cheap about everything but uh it must have been debris and not like poor loading or anything because the rest of the tires have plenty of tread and they do not have uneven wear patterns. So it's not like the camper was loaded incorrectly and towed too fast with too much weight in it. It just had to be a situation where they must have caught, I don't know, a thing on the road that popped the rear tire, unfortunately. What is nice though, this galvanized steel wheel well. I'm looking in here and I can see that it is not all like bashed up and smashed up. So obviously it was not something that happened at high speeds and damaged the RV in transit. Whenever I see a mismatched tire, just like you, I start going, hold the phone, buddy. I need to look at this very closely and I can't see anything that resulted in damage here. So evidently it was either low speeds or while the camper was parked, the, uh, whatever debris they had caught lowered the tire pressure so that when they were parked, they had a chance to change it. Now, I mentioned that uh, you've got the uh, TV bracket, the Jayco builds that Forest River installed on their camper here. Um, you know, under the power awning, it does have LED lighting, outside speakers, and we do have that bigger entry handle for easy come and go. Now, someone's going to say it must be cheap because they only use two steps, not three, and the answer is no. This is a lighter weight camper. It is made to be uh, lighter weight. It is made to be smaller and lower profile. It does not have extra tall exterior height, so it does not need a third step because it sits lower. Overall, guys, I'm happy with it. I think that if, uh, you're looking to get your first camper, or you have a limited tow capacity, or you're getting rid of the old bunkhouse or pop-up or something like that, I think this would be a real solid option for you here. Uh, got questions? Give us a call. We answer those. We do hitching pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.